Joining me now here on the MMA Report, man, it's coming the co-main event of Tuesday night's Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series as it takes on a man who appeared on a recent season of The Ultimate Fighter as Bavon Lewis. Appreciate the time. I, I think for a lot of fighters, it's always kind of interesting how long of a training camp you had for this fight. So how long have you actually known about this matchup? I knew about this matchup for about, I think I want to say 11 weeks almost. Oh, wow. Yeah. So when uh, when your manager you know says hey this is what I got for you did you even know what the contender series was? I heard like I heard some things about it. I didn't know exactly what it was. I didn't know where. I didn't know like you know under like what event, what kind of event it would be. You know, I was just under the like I knew it had something to do with Dana White, but it was <laughs> so. But not I didn't know too much about it. No. Is this the longest training camp of your career? This is, to date, the longest training camp I've ever had, where the opponent stayed the same. Um, yeah. You had a, a pretty stinks, uh, extensive amateur career. You, you had 14 fights going 12-2. and two. How many times as an amateur did your opponent fall out, say, within 48 hours of the fight? Funny, as an amateur, we didn't have a lot of – there wasn't a lot of pulling out. Pulling out. There wasn't a lot of opponents being put out. Whenever there was an opponent, that's what we stick to. That's what they – I never – had an opponent pull out as an amateur through all the fights. Wow, that's crazy. So, Usually on the amateur yeah. scene, you hear about the crazy stories of, like, you weigh in, and then all of a sudden the promoter calls, and he's oh. like, hey, your, your opponent's not going to show up. You, you're, yeah. you're lucky. I am lucky, but I think with my thing, it was more maybe I got the the last of the, you know, the good times where, you know, not, not a lot of people bowed out of fights. I want to say that, you know, people actually came, showed up, and, you know, finish the obligation and of course uh, you're coming off that win at lfa 10 uh, a decision victory there what's uh what was a big takeaway for you out of that matchup um being in there with a really like a high level wrestler you know when when they start talking about him being a high level wrestler that I mean that was that was his thing and doing the research we find out like he did very well for himself and you know at the almost at the next to being in the olympics but uh, he did very well for himself. Him and his brother did very well for themselves as wrestlers. And uh, I, you know, and then finding elevation, I was there to be able to grind with a wrestler at, at being in elevation. I, yeah, I took that's what I took out the most, like being able to just grind with some grind with someone in, you know, in brutal circumstances. And, uh, of course, you train there at Jackson Wink. My understanding is uh, you do a lot of work with Mike Winklejohn. Obviously, a lot of people know Mike and uh, right. w with everything he has done. But for you, is there any piece of advice he has given you throughout this time that just sticks with you on a day-in, day-out basis? Yes, sir. Um, we, we like Everything is repetition, of course. But outside of that, it's more of... When we go to the ring, it's to have fun most of it. You know, we sometimes we, as fighters we get caught up in uh, trying to do the do. Of course, we want to do our best, the best we can at any time. But we get caught up into who we're doing it for. We forget that to have fun with, and relieve some of that pressure and go out there and do do you know perform, like do what you can do, mm -hmm. and have fun. Because the whole reason why we got into it in the first place because we start having fun with MMA. You know. Fights will come, but at the same time, you got to remember it's fun. Man. Go in there and perform and do what you can do. The term having fun, what, what does that mean to you? Is it just going out there and just, uh, you know, showcasing your abilities? Like, what, what's having fun mean? All right, so to me, it means going there and, like, showing your abilities. But not only that, I feel like, okay, you learning, we're, new, we're learning new things every day throughout the camps, like, we, in the next fight, we want to be better than we were in the last fight, you know? But when he says have fun, I mean, it's, it's, it might be a cold word, you know? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's always those – now, I've always wondered this. Like, every fight, do you mix up the code words? Because, you know, if someone goes back to a previous fight, is that something you have to do? I mean, I come from a, a football world where I, I know code words change all the time, especially if you're playing a, a team multiple times in one season. Is that is that the way for you in the fight game? I feel like every fighter has their own, like, they have their own thing to go to. Like, some, some words will fit better with others. You know, we don't always fight the same people, so some people have different codes for different, different, you know, different things. Um, this will be one of the first times where, you know, where I'm using the code system. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. 
but yeah, I'm, I won't say that we switch it up too much since this being my first time. Yeah. And of course, this is going to be a an opportunity for you to showcase your abilities in front of a you know not just Dana White and UFC matchmakers, but a ton of fans that tune in on UFC Fight Pass. What would you want those fans to know about you, whether it's as a person or as a fighter? Well, I, I don't want to say you know a lot of things that we say is, sort of sounds repetitive, but at the end of the day, you know I'm I'm a I'm a fun I'm a fun I'm I'm a well you yeah, get to know me. You know, you'll find out that I'm a, a nice guy. I'm very loving. I mean, you know, people get to know me and they think, uh, oh, this guy's a fighter. So it's hard to, you know, uh, so that's a question that is, I feel like you just have to get to know me throughout the years. Um, it doesn't take much to figure out. You know, I'm just, I'm not just here to fight. At the same time, I sort of want to leave something good, something greater than, that you know, I like to, to me and my manager. I was talking about being a legend one day, like that legendary status that we were ultimately that's the goal, you know. When I have it, when I ask that question to a lot of guys, it, it's a lot more times than not it comes up like I just want people to know I'm a nice guy. Like, is it just you think that's a perception that that people have of yeah. fighters is that they're just mean people? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's 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 a good question because. It, it, it does seem that way, you know. People say, "Oh man, I didn't know you were fighting." It's crazy. I would sometimes think that you're like, you know, we come off as mean, or you know, they don't think we're as down to earth. But I really do believe learning martial arts or learning how to fight, it so it sort of humbles you to where we don't have to be, you know, those people that walk around with a chip on our shoulders and, you know, with a, with a mean mug. Like, we are some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. You know, some more than others. Is there anybody from your childhood, maybe friends or family members, that are just completely shocked that you're a professional fighter? Everybody. Everyone. <laughs> everyone. I was, man, growing up, I was, like, you see, I smile a lot, but I smiled a lot. I was joking all the time. You wouldn't think the one's going to go in, in the ring and take some punches and give out some punches and potentially be wearing his opponent's blood. But, hey, I didn't. I honestly didn't see myself doing this either. Uh, I sort of, I don't want to say I fell into it, but this, I mean, because this is my choice. This is what I choose to do. Win or lose, I still continue to go to the gym and press for another fight. So I, I would like to think that actually I know that a lot of people are surprised that Bavon Lewis is doing this right now. <laughs> and, and the opponent here, uh, Elias Urbino, we remember him from the Ultimate Fighter. He lost uh, to Eric Spicely uh, in the quarterfinal stage of that tournament. Uh, we haven't seen him since then. So is right. it is has it been tough to get ready for him as an opponent because there is no recent footage? I mean, that was those fights that took place in the Ultimate Fire or back in the beginning of 2016. Right, it is. Um, we, man, I, not really. I never really take that into consideration. I like to think, you know, I I take what he what he has out there, and I just assume that he's a lot better at doing it now. Mm-hmm. So we prepare for the best Elias that there is. You know, uh, he doesn't. I like. You know, I like to think everybody's dangerous. Once we step in the ring, we're all dangerous because, you know, we want we want the the next highlight reel. We want the guy on our highlight reel. You know, you could look at me four months before here, and then still we can always have changed in those four months. I'm at the greatest gym in the world, and I have in my mind I want to look better than that last fight. So it's not always. You know, he could still be the same way he was a year ago, you know. It is, but, a, it, but is the mindset for you of like this isn't about him. This is about me. He's got to react to what I do. Is that kind of the mindset you have going into fights? Yeah, most of the time it's more me. I'm going, and you know, you have to dance my dance. You know, of course, it's, it's a fight. It can change, and the, but my whole thing is always adjusting, adjusting to the change, figuring out a different way. If something's not working, I go to the next thing, and ultimately put the ball back in my court to where you're still going to have to be, you know, adjusting to me. So, yeah, I go and then you follow. You, you, I act and you react. And if for some reason it has to change up, I'll adjust and I'll get right back to that. Of course, uh, they fly all the guys in on Saturday. Uh, of course, there's there's this big event going on in Las Vegas on Saturday. Are you going to stay away from it? Are you going to go down there to try to experience it? I mean, or is it like, it's a business trip. I, I can't uh, partake too much. 
Man, uh, I think it's going to be kind of hard to stay away from it. We're going right there. We're going there pretty early, too. So it'll be it'll be a shame to go to Las Vegas and not experience, you know, the, the riot going on. I don't want to get caught up to where I'm lost, but I definitely want to go there and I want to experience it. It's like, well, I don't think it's going to be a Mayweather versus McGregor, too, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I I can't see Connor pulling it off, but who knows? You know, maybe he lands that one punch. Maybe it does happen. Maybe Father Time catches up to Floyd a little bit. But <laughs> that I, one punch, man. Uh, you know, sometimes that one punch can it'll make a difference. But we got to see what happens after that one punch. If that one punch doesn't do it, what does he do with the? You know, yeah. can he land the second and the third? And, you know. We're all going to be watching here, but of course we're going to be watching on Tuesday night, Dana White's Tuesday night consider series to see your fight. Uh, any predictions on, on how you get the victory? Predictions? As far as that, I can tell you this. I'm looking. I can tell you that there will, there will be some blood, all right? There will be some blood. Like the way I like to get down, like there's got to be some blood. I feel comfortable. I have everything that I want for this fight. I, you know, I, I have the preparation is done. I finally feel that I'm in a place to where I can, I know who I am. I know what I can do. I believe in what I can do. And also the teachings and the, the drilling, the nonstop just work that we put in every day, you know. Where can everyone follow you at on social media? To catch me at B-V-O-N-K-L at Instagram. I have a Snapchat the same. It's sort of the reason for that name is uh, I leave out the E because a lot of people growing up they call me Bevin or uh, they just they butchered my name a lot. So I was like, you know, let me take out the E so that way it makes sense. Bavon, Bavon, and then I put K L middle initial last uh, last name as an initial. So catch me at B V O N K L at Instagram, uh, Snapchat, Facebook. My name is Bavon Lewis. Follow me. Check me out. Start posting more and uh, get to know me.